Stand tight, stand tight. Oh, shit, I'm gonna have to. He's gonna spool me. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Blue Water Life. It is Saturday morning. Um, plan is we got we got a lot of stuff going on here, so I got the well filled. We got a good, bunch of good sized filters in there. We got a couple finger mullet. Um, I got the bottom rods. Um, you know, I also brought this guy, a little slow pitch jig. So um, plan is today we're just gonna go drift the edge, probably in like 130, 140 feet. Um, see if we can get like kingfish or mutton snapper um, and then you know we may we may throw we may start experimenting a little bit with the slow pitch jig so we'll see let's see how the day goes let's see how the bite is and uh it's saturday so sometimes the reef's a little crazy but um you know if the wrecks and stuff are super filled over maybe we'll we'll slow pitch jig so we can go out a little bit deeper where less people are um but um stay tuned we'll see you guys out there So let's set up our drift right here. I say we're drifting this way, the way of the arrows. Um, we want our boat to kind of drift in this direction. So what we're doing, we're throwing the the drift sock off the front of the boat. You can get these things pretty cheap at like Bass Pro Shops. I mean, they work perfect. It was like 25 bucks. Um, but we're gonna toss it off there. That way it keeps the bow and the boat facing in the direction that we want. Uh, in this setup, we're throwing four lines and maybe even a fifth, but the long lines are a flat line, so I like to throw a flat line off the front. Uh, a bottom bait or the short lines, another flat line kind of in the middle, a bottom bait, and then sometimes I'll throw one off the back uh, as well. Normally one of these bottom baits, I actually put a little weight on it and kind of get it in a mid bait, um, and that's the one that got the bite today. Got a nice little little finger mullet here. All right, we're gonna get the bottom set up. We're about 180 feet of water. Whew. All right. To the bottom she goes. We're a little deep, 180 feet, but I like going in like 140, but there's no one in this area. Yeah. The next one set up, we're gonna get the drift sock out first then. I like using the drift sock. It helps to keep my boat drifting at the right angle. That way I can get all my lines off one side of the boat uh, without getting them all tangled. If I don't use this, the boat tends to drift all my lines off the back and it makes just a total mess. I'm spending all day long kind of using the throttles trying to keep myself uh, side to side in my drift. Yeah. Trying to straighten the boat out here. Filter it on the wire. This one's the mighty bait. Pay attention to this. There he goes, there he goes. Woo -hoo. There he goes, there he goes. Woo -hoo. Ah. Woo -hoo. Oh man, at this point this sail crossed my other flat line and now I got it all tangled up. My other line is just ripping drag. So I have two hooks in the sailfish and this thing is just taking off uh, and peeling drag on my rod and the rod uh, right there on the, the bow of the boat. 
Oh no. Stand tight, stand tight. Shit, I'm gonna have to. He's gonna spool me. At this point, I made the executive decision to start clearing the lines, but I got a freaking oh, mess. Either gonna chase down this sail, or this sail is gonna spool me right here, right now. Shit, I don't know. Somehow I got both baits on him. At this point, I'm just pulling in the drift sock. I'm trying to clear lines as fast as I can so I can chase this thing down. Oh, God. That's a shark. No wonder my lines were all tangled up. The shark came and, and ran across both of my bottom baits and just screwed everything up. There's like, I think you got both lines. Ah,
Oh, hey, my man ran through every line I had. Not only did that shark run through all my bottom lines, this sailfish ran through all my flat lines. What a freaking mess. I tried to run with the boat in gear, I tried to get this thing revived back, he was just not kicking, I didn't want to feed him to the sharks. put him in the smoker so thank you buddy brain him out okay out of misery that storm came as soon as as soon as we brought that sail in crazy <laughs> Well, I wasn't planning on keeping the sailfish, but just the fact that that thing, he fought for a good 25 minutes before I actually got him in. By the time I got him to the boat, he had like no life in him. So, I mean, I was trying to revive him and get him going, but you know, I'd rather uh, put him on the smoker than you know just let him die out there. So we got him to the boat, we brained him. We're heading back, it's early. I was, I've been out here for about an hour and change. We got that bite on the first trip. Um, that thing was on a pilcher. I mean, he ran through all four of my lines. I had to cut every line I had. Luckily, I got my weights back on both. Uh, but, man, that was a lot of fun. That thing was that thing was out of the water. He was, he was, he's a big guy. So, um, we're gonna get back to the, we're gonna get back to the house. We'll play him up. Um, and then we're gonna fire up the smoker and probably make some smoke dip. So, you know, so. Hopefully we make it back there. I think one of the, I think one of the pistons, or uh, one of the cylinders is not firing right. And it's making the, the engine shake a lot. Chances are probably the plugs are bad, or one of the plugs is bad. So, I'm gonna get back, I'm gonna, uh, you know, I'm gonna order a bunch of plugs for the boat just replace everything. I just did the 100 hour service, but I didn't do the plugs, I should have. Um, so, 
all good. That's the best part of owning a boat. So we're gonna take our time, we're gonna get back, and then, um, yeah, see you guys back in the house. Good morning, it's the next day. Uh, we've actually had our sailfish on ice for probably uh, about 24 hours, so I don't know if you guys can hear me. It's super windy, but let the meat kind of harden up. Um, never, I've never filleted a sailfish before, so <clears throat> we're gonna see what it's like, but I think we're actually gonna even weigh him, um, you know, before and see, see, how, see how big he is and see his weight. Um, probably going to try to use that after but I'm probably going to try to cut the head and everything off over here just because of sheer size so let's grab them out of the ice and let's weigh them up Whoa, right here. Heavy. <laughs> All right, let's try this one. Let's try this. Mm. Ah, his beak's still on the ground. You can see it's probably like a, yeah, about a 30, 35 pounder. It's a little bit, maybe a little bit more because he's sitting on the ground. But... Look at the colors and how this thing, you guys see the, these things are so fast in the water, right? They have these kind of, Two antennas here that kind of tuck up under their stomach to, you know, help direct them, help keep them lean. You have the bill. There's really no teeth on them, but this is like sandpaper, so they like whack their bait with the the nose. But right. it's a big fish. So, all right, let's get them over here. I'm gonna fly them up. head first like any other fish Thick back bone right here. There it is. That thing. Look at the size of the mouth for how big this was. It's probably a good like 60 something inch fish. Well, this will feed the fish down there for sure. Let's see them all. So I'm using like a big serrated knife right here. Just to cut that off. And then to flay the meat, this is a little bit of a thicker knife, buff blade. So we're gonna, we're gonna flay him down. May try to do it in one long fillet, but we'll see. I'm gonna turn the hose on first. Just like any other fish, I'm gonna run right down the Backbone of this thing. Ooh, that's good. It's a big fish to play. Just run. 
running the knife right down it. Blaze actually looks pretty good. in the belly. This is his stomach. Well, no, this thing's pretty digested. Looks like the pilchards that I was feeding them. There's this may be even a flying fish. Let's do the other side, then we'll take them up to the fillet table. Feed this guy. A sink. Sink so my mangroves can eat you. There he goes. All right. The meat fillets up here. Oh, that thing itself. Okay. Oh. Good solid meat there. Keep on keeping on. So I think we're gonna we're gonna cut this in sections. This is too much to fillet in one shot. Start down here. It's a pretty nice chunk of meat. It is, it kind of looks like tuna. But I left some of this on here because this is going to be really gamey. You can already tell. So.
I'm actually really excited for this fish dip. Yeah. It's a nice fillet. Feel. Oh, I'm wrong. Let's go. No, let's go this way. Perfect. There we go. So you can see these fillets are, I mean, it's pretty nice chunks of meat right there. And a little bit of marbling. There's a lot of bloodline. I probably should have bled them out a little bit before, but we're going to put it on the smoker anyways. I mean, the meat looks looks pretty nice. We may even try to cook up a piece and see how it tastes, but, um, so, yeah. Even this, this slice is a little bit lighter here towards the head, but. All right, I'm gonna flay the rest of these. We'll get these in a Ziploc, hit them in the fridge, and then we're gonna brine them up. Uh, and I'll show you guys how we're gonna brine them, and then we're gonna put them on the smoker to make some freaking awesome, awesome fish dips. All right, guys, so we're gonna do a, a fish dip with the sailfish that we caught. So I actually have I mean, all this fish sitting in a bag. I wrapped it up in some paper towels. So. All we're gonna do, I'm um, just taking this stuff out of the wrap, uh, and then I'm gonna cut out all of like the bloodline uh, here first. I'm gonna make sure the meat looks good. Um, once we have, and the meat looks good, um, I'm gonna mix up my brine. Uh, so I got salt, um, I have brown sugar, and a soy sauce. So we're gonna mix that up in here, and then we're gonna pour them in these bags, and then let them sit in the fridge. I'm gonna let it sit for like 24 hours, um, you know, so it really gets in the fish and then we go from there. So, all I'm doing now is just getting me fish, uh, getting the bloodlines out of the fish here. So, we're just cutting out the bloodline um, and then making these big chunks so we can get them in the brine. So, any of the bloodline that I have that I'm not using, I'm going to feed to the. the um, all of the snappers I have. And we got our mixer, so we're gonna stir this stuff up. And just kind of kind of mix, make sure everything's dissolved. But honestly, the point of the brine is that when you're putting it, uh, you're fishing it, it helps smoke the meat a little bit easier. Um, and it just, it holds flavor much better. We got all of our fish, we have our brine. Uh, it's all kind of mixed up here. So the next thing we're gonna do, I'm just gonna put, get some fish in the bag, and then we're gonna put this brine um, on the fish. Probably gonna need multiple bags. There's a lot of fish here. Um, so I'm gonna fill up the bags probably like that. I'm gonna take the brine. And we're literally pouring it all over the counter. There we go. Get a lot of the air out of that bag. You guys can see that one is good to go. So we're gonna let this one just soak in this water um, overnight. I'm gonna put the rest of the fish uh, in a bag in the brine, um, and then we're gonna get it in the fridge and let it just chill overnight and suck up all those juices, and then we'll see you guys tomorrow. All right, we're about to fire up the Komodo. Um, get this thing going. So we got, still got a bunch of coals in there. We're gonna use some applewood smoking chunks. Um, so we're gonna get this thing heated up to about 200 degrees and then we'll get the fish on here.
let's get our fish on. Some people like to pat dry these, honestly. I'm just gonna lay right in here. Got a lot of fish. So, whew, looks good. Honestly, that's probably, that's only half. So we're gonna freeze the other half and then we're gonna let this stuff cook up. I wanna, I wanna say probably leave it about 225 degrees for um, two hours, two and a half hours, depending upon the thickness. I mean, some of this stuff is, it's pretty thick. So it may take a little bit longer, but um, we'll keep checking in on it. We're about two and a half hours in. There we go. Those nice chunks. All right, we're gonna get this off, let it cool, and then we're gonna make our fish dip. All right guys, so the fish is done. I put it in the fridge so it can cool down for a while. Uh, so we have all of our uh, smoked fish right here. What I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna just put it in the food processor uh, and get it all kind of chopped up here and then get it in the bowl. Um, I'm gonna chop up my red peppers, my onion, um, and then we'll measure our sour cream, our mayonnaise, and then kind of all of our different seasonings here. And we'll get them mixed up in this bowl. So I'm gonna start, I'm gonna get these things all chopped up in the food processor. So. We're gonna do it for all of this fish, and then we're gonna get it right here in the bowl. Oh, that's a lot of fish. And this is only half, it's only half of that fish, so. We are done. Oh. oh damn, it's hard. That is a lot of fish there. All right, so we're gonna cut up the peppers and the onion um, and then get it kind of mixed in here. And then we're gonna start working in our mayonnaise, sour cream, and the rest of this, the rest of this stuff. Really easy. Mm -hmm. oh, no. Too many. Oops. There we go. So we got all our peppers and onions. I didn't want to put the rest of it in just in case it's too much. So you can always add, you can always take away. So. All right, so this, this is, we got a lot of fish dip here, so we're gonna put a lot of mayonnaise. I usually just, I'm gonna put enough in here until it's enough that I can get it somewhat like, you know, soft. You gotta be able to mix this in. So I'm gonna start with about the same amount of sour cream. And mayonnaise in there. And then we're just gonna grab a spoon. Or a spatula. And we're just gonna mix this in here. Try to get our right consistency. All right, there you go. That's some people like a little bit more mayonnaise, -y, but I think that's pretty good there. So there's a lot of honestly. There's this is pretty salty, so I'm not even gonna put any salt in it. Um, just from the brine from the fish. So what we're gonna do? Use a little bit of Old Bay seasoning here. Never go wrong with a little base. We'll get that all mixed in with a little bit more. We have Worcestershire, Worcestershire sauce. Jeez, oh, man. So we're gonna get this. Just not much of this, because this stuff is strong, but just enough. All right, and then we're gonna put a little bit of pepper in here. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna mix this up and then we should be good to go. Oh, I end up just keep tossing, end up doing the entire thing of sour cream and do a lot more mayonnaise. 
Um, you can see it's a lot kind of soupier there, but it was really. Oh yeah, way better. It was really salt. It was really salty. Um, must have just been off from all the fish brine. So this is way better. All right, so first one, no jalapeno. Look at that, oh yeah. That was really good. Now I'm gonna do one. Oops. I'm gonna put a, put a little jalapeno on there. Excuse my hands. I'm the only one eating right now. So we're gonna do chip, put it there, load her up with a little jalapeno. Look at that. Would you look at that? My goodness. Oh. This way. It's definitely the way to do it. So, whew, that is good. But there's a lot of fish tip. I'm gonna go give it away to the neighbors. Um, I'll keep enough for myself, but that is a lot. So, um, thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll put this recipe, it is a Florida Keys. Uh, I didn't, it's not my recipe, I sold off lines. But honestly, who thought sailfish would taste so good? It is really good. If you guys ever, you know, need to smoke a sailfish, definitely make some fish tip. But, Thanks so much for watching guys. More fishing and boating videos are on the way. This is Blue Water Life.